the Thoughty OT podcast. I, I just want to put put this out there because I'm just wondering what your thoughts on it are. Like, do you think that for 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 an autistic person or for anyone in general who has sort of sensory differences, do you find that people gravitate towards stims that are related to things that they're hyposensitive to? Mm. It's possible because they might be seeking more sensory input Mm. to it. So I don't get dizzy very easily. And I am constantly seeking like the spinning and the twirling. So Mm -hmm. it it could be related. I would hesitate to say all the time. Yes. Because, for example, I'm extremely sensitive to a lot of different kinds of lighting. Mm. But when there's a light that I really like, then I will want to repetitively look at it, mm. um, stare at that visualizer, and I'll feel really comfortable and very joyful doing that. I'm my, also, my favorite one at the moment is, is this oh. fib- fiber optic light. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. <laughs> I think another example is I'm hypersensitive to sound, but one of my number one, no, don't apologize. That was beautiful. (laughs) No, I just knocked something over. I was like, oh, (laughs) shit. Um, (laughs) I thought you were pointing (laughs) that out. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) Yeah. Thankfully we have like noise canceling things going on, but yeah. So with sound, I'm very, very hypersensitive to sound. Mm -hmm. But auditory stimming is one of my number one ways of stimming by listening to a song that I like a lot mm. on repeat. So I think that we might see some stimming because of needing more sensory input in that place. Mm-hmm. But I also think there's that element of sensory joy when something hits just right. Because I am so sensitive to sound, I can tell really quickly when just the right sounds came together in just the right way. Mm-hmm. Because if they didn't, then I would immediately notice <laughs> and be like, this is a wreck. What was that weird sound there? I think I'm super picky about key changes. Yes. Mm, yeah. When someone does a key change and it's not right, I'll just want to like throw my speaker out the window. <laughs> It's interesting that you say that because I think for me, like whenever I get myself into situations where I'm highly anxious or whether, you know, if I'm having a meltdown even, I always gravitate towards vestibular based stims, like for me. And I tend to limit like pretty much all of like the the hypersensitive kind of side of me, which is pretty much everything else. <laughs> so but but then again, like if I'm, you know, I find a lot of, as you said, sort of joy in sort of the 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 differences in, in sort of how I how I view things. Because, you know, as we were talking about, like those game situations where you look at a waterfall or, you know, I can become very, very hyper fixated on something and just completely forget about my surroundings. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. If I'm. Uh, yeah. Are they the rare occurrence where I go to like a rave or something? You know, there'll, there'll be one light that I see that's just, just just a combination of colors and it has a certain movement to it that I just fixate on. And it's the same with like the moon or like stars or like... And th- those things tend to be things that I gravitate towards to make me feel good, I guess. Whereas I, I don't always go for vestibular sort of proprioceptive stuff for me to to feel good if that makes sense yeah i i think my vestibular stems at least the the stem dancing that i do and the twirling Mm -hmm. and things like that are very very much connected to sensory joy for me i do rock back and forth when i'm stressed though or if i'm like trying really hard to process something that's difficult for me to process, I'll be more likely to rock. Mm -hmm. I also, this is more of a proprioceptive stim. Whenever I get very stressed, I tap my chest repeatedly. Mm -hmm. 
And so that, that taps into the proprioceptive sense. And I don't do that when I'm feeling good ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so it is helpful for me sometimes to keep track of which of my stems I do when I'm in a different mood because it's really valuable information. Because when you're little and you're reading books about feelings, Mm. they say, oh, when I'm happy, I smile. When I'm excited, I laugh. When I'm sad, I cry. But for me, I might, my book would be, you know, when I'm sad, I tap my chest. When I'm happy, I twirl and clap and jump up and down, even as an adult. And those things were not really in those books. So autistic individuals are often not able to really understand feelings, that's my theory, Mm. because we're taught feelings in a non-autistic way. Mm. If we taught feelings through stems, it might be very different. 